I'm Amir, co-founder and CEO of Virtually, the company that is taking cognitive assessment and training to the next level thanks to virtual reality. I'm super happy to be presenting to you today because it was at the Games for Change Festival last year in New York when I first presented Enhanced VR Brain Training and our foray into what is a rare example of how VR serves as a critical use case for the education and healthcare industries. Now the brain training market serves primarily as longevity tech. If you consider, for example, that every three seconds someone in the world is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and that by 2030, the elderly will outnumber children for the first time in US history, that every single baby boomer is going to be over 65 years of age by that time, that they are living longer and longer, and that cognitive illnesses can be detected as early as 20 years before they onset. Well, you can start to imagine how any technology that stands to help to extend the quality of life for the elderly is going to be an increasing demand during the next decade. And we have seen the huge popularity of screen-based apps like Lumosity, Elevate, and Brain HQ because they have all made the gamification of cognitive science accessible to anyone with a smartphone or a tablet. These apps have been pioneering by taking cognitive science exercises and principles to create a library of closed loop mini games designed to test and train different cognitive abilities like your memory skills, your problem solving skills, your information processing, task switching, and flexibility skills. Games that are designed essentially to bring you to your maximum level of difficulty and then plateau you there. And then you get back whenever you can to see if you can outdo yourself and get to the higher level. It's not about creating games that are addictive or maximize session length, but to create an experience of creating value in being able to play a short session on a daily basis or as frequently as you can manage in order to keep track of your mental fitness throughout time. And although these companies have generated piles of research to demonstrate the benefit of regular use, there still isn't conclusive evidence to suggest that regular brain training actually works or that it offers the holy grail benefit of improving your cognitive abilities in any appreciable way. For example, will playing brain training games regularly help me remember my grocery list any better? Do my taxes any better? remember those faces at those events or conferences or parties any better. In the industry, we call this transferability or far transfer or generalization. It's not proven yet in a peer reviewed way that the scientific community can all come together and say, this works. The hypothesis of enhanced VR brain training is that the missing ingredient is the body. These screen based formats exclude the body and virtual reality serves as the first digital format to offer embodiment. And it's really an amazing time because in conjunction to all of this, we have, you know, last week, um, the FDA backed Achilles uh, Endeavor RX game designed as what is now a prescribed treatment for uh, ADHD. But unlike screen-based brain training, where your physical engagement is restricted to your fingers and thumbs, VR triggers the autonomic nervous system, the vestibular balance system, and proprioception into believing the experience is real, engaging multiple cognitive, emotional, and experiential learning systems in parallel and in synchrony. Whatever Achille has opened the doors to right now, they've really unleashed the floodgates because when it comes to the types of games that are now being able to be created for the purpose of this new sector of games as medicine is just beginning and it's only going to heat up more and more throughout the next few years. In January, we released the beta version of Enhanced VR, which offers a daily cognitive workout of short, fun, and intense games designed to test and train different cognitive abilities, not just the standard ones, but also your spatial orientation your spatial audio awareness, and your motor skills. 
We're also the first to release a web application designed for hospitals, clinics, and senior living communities, as well as companies and organizations in general, to manage and monitor the cognitive performance of their communities and users. <clears throat> and this is web application that serves as the basis of our business model, but more importantly, it's central to our long-term vision of creating a new digital health marker for the early detection of cognitive illnesses like dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's by mining the big data of volumetric gameplay patterns with the help of machine learning. If you read my article from on VentureBeat last September, I covered the game Sea Hero Quest, um, developed by the UK Alzheimer's Association and sponsored by Deutsche Telekom, and where they found that two minutes of VR gameplay generated over five hours worth of lab research for the study of Alzheimer's. If you can consider what that means, and you can see why our vision is along these lines and that we're creating a library of games specifically targeting specific cognitive domains, and it's all volumetric gameplay data, I can imagine that you can see where we're going. As you can see with this trailer that I'm about to play, of um, enhanced VR brain training. Our app is all about embodiment. It's all about triggering the full body in every experience. The games are being built right now. We have six, six titles at the moment and we'll have 15 by the end of the year. We have to have a sufficient number of games in each category so that let's say you want to log in daily we don't want you to have um, repetition of the random games that you get every day every time you log in you have to update us on the number of hours you slept on that day and your your mood on a five point scale and then you play three random games and then we offer you a reporting suite of features that allows you to bring meaning um, from the data that you're collecting about yourself and your performance. And of course, organizations can collate that and aggregate that for many use cases that we're amplifying by integrating third-party data tools like Tableau. And also being able to, in the next release, integrate all sorts of biometric third-party data tools like EEG, eye tracking, which is typically even collected by default from some of the headsets. Um, and making this data more and more powerful and being able to le be leveraged by researchers as well as those communities of caregivers that want to help the elderly. As of next month, we're launching the full release of Enhanced VR with a new UX, more games, and new reporting tools like letting you know how your quality of sleep and moods affects your cognitive performance, not just in terms of aggregate scores, but specifically how does it, how does it kind of serve as a detriment to your memory skills, your motor skills, or does it not? These are types of insights that I think are invaluable and in that this new generation of games as they intersect with emerging technologies as well as sciences like neuroscience and cognitive science. And with the help of machine learning, the sky is the limit on how we can bleed what through what it means to be a gaming experience versus an educational or therapeutic experience. Thank you so much to the team and organizers uh, at Games for Change Festival for the opportunity to update you all. And I'm looking forward to being able to do so again um, in the near future as we progress and we build up um, our vision for VR brain training. Thank you so much.